as I start to burnish this bowl, there's this sheen to it. So what is a burnished pot? A burnished pot is a polished pot. It is a pot that is very smooth, has a sheen to it, um, and that's usually by rubbing either something metal that's very smooth against it during certain drying stages or a stone and I like to use a stone more than I like to use metal because it will scratch the metal uh, at least this clay will scratch the metal and using a stone I can easily compact it there's a lot of different forms of stones that you can use but the general idea of burnishing your pot is that you're compacting the clay particles down thereby um, making more of a uh, making a tighter surface you know you're making this more compact tighter denser so it's going to give it that sheen what i like to do this pot right now is in the leather hard stage <clears throat> meaning that it has one more stage before it gets to bone dry and usually I will compact with I'll, I'll compact the surface down and try and get it as level as possible with a a rib some sort of rib first and I'll do that right after I get done throwing so as you can see it still has these ripple these ripples through here and that's where I put the rib onto the side of the pot as it was spinning on the wheel and it gave kind of like these ripples which I don't necessarily like anymore I kind of like everything as smooth as possible <clears throat> but it does help get a lot of this grit compacted down into the vessel um, but for specifically for burnishing I like to use a stone sometimes you can do this on the wheel uh, this pot for me is a little too big for me to do and get all the angles that I need so I'm gonna have to do this by hand usually by hand you get a better result anyways so what you want to think about doing is getting a nice angle getting a flat surface with your stone and don't push your stone directly down you want to kind of push it at an angle so you're pushing it diagonally don't push it down and then just move around push it diagonally so as I'm moving either clockwise or counterclockwise depending on which way you want to burnish your pot you're gonna think about not just pushing down to compact but pushing down and with that same movement you wanna go with the same movement that's how I like to do it I like to go with the curve of the bowl I don't like to just do an area burnish it which I've seen people do which I mean it can work but <clears throat> I'm trying to go the same direction with mine I feel like it it somehow blends it in better um, in terms of going with the lines of the pot that are already on there so I go with the shape of whatever I have and usually it's cylindrical or round so I just go either counterclockwise or clock clockwise and I try and turn with the bowl uh, and that just helps compact everything better for me I think but you can notice that as I start to burnish this bowl there's this sheen to it um, and that is 
polished clay. That's it. That's, that's a burnished surface. Now, it may not look as shiny as it starts to dry off again. As, it's, as it starts to dry again, you get this, uh, as it gets to bone dry, you almost get this dusty kind of look to it. So you may need to compact it down again if you didn't burnish it well enough on the leather hard or catch it exactly at the right time. Sometimes if it's still too wet um, and you think you might have caught it at the leather leather hard stage but it's still a little, the bowl's still a little too wet, as it dries you may need to compact it down again. So usually I burnish my pot two to three times um, just to catch it at different drying stages because at different drying stages you'll see the surface is either a little ashy or maybe there's like some divots or something in there that you haven't caught so I'll come back around through different drying stages mainly in the leather hard and bone dry and just try and get everything compact as much as possible um, and yeah, that's really about it. I would suggest using stones that are already somewhat polished. You don't want to use a very rough stone, obviously, because it will tear up the surface of your pot. But also, uh, I've read that, and through through experience, I've I've seen that using a very smooth but also a very hard stone find a find one that's uh, has a very high hardness rating on the Mo scale so I think this this is just like a river rock which is probably has like six and a half to seven on the hardness scale if you could find like a topaz that has a mirror finish you would most likely get a mirror finish result on your ceramics because it is more compact it is higher hardness so it's not going to have as many scratches or divots inside of your stone as you're doing this uh, topaz is rated eight so you could almost get a mirror like finish if you found the right stone um, but i usually will burnish my pieces and then i'll apply terra sig which kind of gives it more of a mirror like finish something like this result over here um, this is one that I burnished you can still kind of see those lines through there where I threw it but this is one that I burnished and then I applied Terra Sigillata to it which burnishing and applying Terra Sig um, help with absorbing these carbon carbon marks that you'll get when you put organics on it so burnishing helps with that but then put applying tear sig also helps with that because it closes in a lot of these pores allowing for more absorption of carbon uh, so not only does burnishing have that effect but tear sig also enhances or adds upon your burnishing so just something to think about when you are burnishing um, really it's going to help you a lot with making your making the feel of your pot a lot smoother um, it's almost like a warm kind of like buttery feeling it doesn't feel like glaze it feels it, it, it feels a lot better than a glaze I think glaze has kind of like that cold glassy feel this has like a smooth warm buttery kind of feel to it so just a different different technique to think about when finishing up your pots um, but for me I enjoy burnishing and I enjoy applying tear sig and I'll show you in another video how to apply a terra sig to your burnished pots so as you are burnishing you'll notice 
that there's going to be a color difference and that's because there's still moisture in your pot and that's okay you want a little bit of moisture in your pot when you're burnishing because it helps compact and keep that those clay particles together um, then as it dries it 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 stays dense it stays more compact uh, but what I want to talk about is one of the best stages that I like to burnish at, which is where your pot may look bone dry, but it's still cool to the touch. So if your pot is bone looks bone dry, but it still feels cool to the touch, that means there's still moisture in there, which means you have this top ashy layer that can be compacted down into a more of a layer that has moisture into it so with this right here obviously it looks bone dry but when I push into it you can see the color change and you can see that there's a sheen on it now um, and that is from that is just from burnishing your pot <laughs> I don't usually like to burnish the foot just because I like a rough foot so that it can grip onto whatever I have it. This is a bowl, so flipped over, that's what it's going to look like. I want it to be sturdy, I don't want it to slide. So usually I won't burnish the bottom, uh, but I just wanted to show you really kind of what a good stage for burnishing looks like. So it'll look bone dry but it'll still be cool to the touch. Uh, usually if you let, if you flip your piece over and let your bottom dry first, you should get a pretty even, um, a pretty even consistency of moisture throughout your entire pot. At the top of the rim, it was a little bit more dry even with me flipping it just because my rim is thinner than my bottom. This, this bowl is pretty bottom heavy, but uh, that's also something to think about when you are burnishing is if you have a thin piece or a piece that you don't think you can push onto, um, then you might need to do a different method of burnishing that doesn't need as much pressure. With this, I, I've, I've had experience enough experience burnishing I know how much pressure I can put onto this pot while still getting good results but starting out you might not have the same um, you might not have the same results because you don't have the experience to know how much pressure to put onto the pot to get a nice burnish um, so as this dries I'll show you a different method of burnishing which is letting it get to the bone dry stage, applying water to it, and then compressing it. Now when I say bone dry stage, I mean completely bone dry. It doesn't feel cool to the touch. It's room temperature, it feels ashy, it looks white, or it's, you know, it looks off color. It doesn't, it looks very light. Um, yeah, and I'll show you guys how to do it at that stage. Alright guys, so this is a bone dry uh, pot that I made and I'm going to show you how to burnish at the bone dry stage. So I showed you in the last clips uh, how to burnish when it's in between hard leather and the bone dry stage, how to think about that process and how to go about it. Um, this one is a little bit, a little bit, I would say, easier because you can definitely tell at the bone dry stage when it's bone dry. It's ashy. Um, it's ashy to the touch. It is white, light, lighter in color. You can see here where I use this paintbrush with a little bit of moisture and just cleared off some of the... Uh, grit 
that was kind of like in between his mouth here. And I'm going to show you how to make just burnished individual areas. So for here, I want the lower lip to be burnished because I want it to reflect whenever the sun hits it or a light source hits it. So I have a paintbrush that I just use this spray bottle with, which I'll show you how to use this spray bottle too, but I just used it, sprayed some of it. and didn't want it too moist just enough to get that bottom lip wet and you can tell that color difference just when it has moisture in it compared to when it is bone dry so with that moisture still in it that's when you want to catch it for burnishing and you can use any stone that is smooth um, flat doesn't have a lot of grit in it or divots or anything like that and you can see as I start to make, as I start to put pressure on here, onto the lip, how it changes color again. It's getting even more compact. Um, so all you're doing when you're burnishing is just compacting the clay. So think about that when you're doing it. Don't think about it as rubbing the surface. Think about it as compacting it. So you want a certain amount of pressure on there. You don't just want to rub across it. You want to rub across it with enough pressure to really compress the clay. So, and ideally I would need another stone that can get deeper into these little crevices, but just for this demonstration, and for this pot, it doesn't really, I'm not really too worried about it. Um, but you really just want to get all that clay compacted the best you can. Remember, use a stone that doesn't have like any hard edges or any deep divots, anything like that, because it will, it will affect the burnish of your pot. Um, it could potentially uh, collect sand and other kinds of grit in between the divots or in those if there was a crack in here and they could just pull it along the surface and actually just scratch it up more. So you need to make sure that whatever you're using is smooth um, and just hard enough to withstand the pressure of rubbing it on clay. So that's how you would do. Um, that's how you would do more of a spot burnish, where you just can burnish something in just a general area. If you wanted to burnish the entire if you wanted to burnish the entire pot. You'd want to use a spray bottle. So this spray bottle is, I think it's called like a, um, like a aerosol bottle or something like that. It doesn't have anything bad. It's just pressurized water that um, sp sprays out into a fine mist. Um, but I think they're like 10 bucks on Amazon and I found these to, uh, to work the best because of how fine that mist really is. So I would use something like this. Um, you want it about maybe a foot out when you spray and you just really want to lightly mist the area. You don't want to get it super, super moist again. So I'm going to try and just do the cheeks here to kind of give that a gloss over the cheeks. and. I'll maybe do spot, I'll, I'll probably burnish the eyes, spot burnish the eyes, and then I'll call this good. But to do the cheeks or to do larger areas, you really want this. So I'm going to come about a foot out. I'm going to just pan past the cheek area and see how the cheek is getting most of that, um, most of that moisture there. 
And then you just want to come in while it's still wet, while you can still see that color change there. And push in and with and move with the form of the vessel. So for this, I'm moving, trying to move with the form of the cheek. I'm not trying to push super hard into one area, just kind of letting the stone flow over it in an organic way. I'm not trying to go with straight lines or circles. I really think when you're burnishing, um, it's best to go in one direction most of the time because if your clay, clay particles are, they hold memory. So if you push it one way and then you push it back the other way, it's not going to stick as well. It's not going to um, burnish as well or hold a gloss as well. And you have the potential of once you push it one way and you compact it down one way, when you push it back the other way if you did, which I don't suggest, I suggest going one way, taking it off or gliding back smoothly without really touching it. Um, if you go back the opposite way, say I went like this way and then this way, have the potential of not only unsettling those clay particles, but also pulling up sand or other pieces of grit and pushing it back the other way, which could lead to um, scratches and stuff in your burnish. And I could just use my After you've burnished it and after it's dried, you should still see those glossy marks where you left it. It should feel different and it should look different and it should reflect more light. And if you want to get into some of these harder to reach areas like the eyes, I suggest finding different polished stones that you can use um, to really get into these hard to reach surfaces and remember the harder the stone the better the burnish harder smoother and more polished the stone the better the burnish will be so so I got a lot of a little bit of stuff to clean up here but yeah that's that's the basics of burnishing if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like, leave a message, let me know what you want to see next. Thanks guys.